The purpose of this graph, which comes from the same set of class handouts that we referred to several times earlier, is to show, as it says on the left, uh, running vertically up and down the screen, how short run total cost curves could cross. So we're first going to assume, as is obvious, I think, from the isoquants, that Q0 is less than Q1, which is less than Q2. So that's the amount of corn. It's obvious because Q0 uses less water and fertilizer than Q1, which uses less water and fertilizer than Q2. Similarly, as we've indicated, F0 is less than F1. And we want to talk about the cost of producing Q0 bushels or Q1 bushels or Q2 bushels when you have a choice of either F0 or F1 pounds of fertilizer, but do you don't have any other choice of fertilizers. It's just F0 and F1. So let's look at the Q0 case first. For the Q0 case, you have two possibilities. If you produce Q0 using F0 pounds of fertilizer, you're here. And if you produce Q0 using F1 pounds of fertilizer, you're here. Now the question is, what's cheaper? I've drawn ISO cost lines. Here I've indicated the, oops, that the dotted lines are ISO cost lines. So the relevant ISO cost lines are this one and this one. And you can see that the one corresponding to F0 gives a lower total cost than the one corresponding to F1. The, uh, earlier, we, gra we call these total costs, we label these total cost lines. This is one total cost line, this is another total cost line. And uh, I call them here ISO cost lines. It's the same thing. So the cheapest way of producing Q0, since you only have the choice of F0 and F1, is to go here. Because that generates a lower total cost. And what's the cheapest way of producing Q1? You compare this point to this point, because those are the only two relevant points. You know you want to produce Q1. There are only two ways to do it, using F1, uh, using F0 and F1, because I'm only giving you two choices for fertilizer. Well, it turns out those are on exactly the same ISO cost line. Oops. Let me do that right. Okay, so those are on the same ISO cost line. And so you don't care whether you go here or here. In other words, the total cost of producing Q1 is the same regardless of whether you use F0 or F1. Let's keep track of our results. Q short run total cost and label these SRTC1 SR I'll get rid of the the prime symbol and put another symbol in TC3 TC4 TC5 Q0 I'll just call it TC instead of SRTC, because you know what I mean. So for Q0, the cheapest way was, yeah, you could get TC1. For Q1, it was TC3. regardless of which. Uh, for Q0, there were two choices. The, the choice that you didn't take 
was was uh, was that one was TC2 for Q1 it didn't matter now how about for Q3 for Q Q3 you're trying to compare this point with this point the one that's cheaper is th this point up here because it's on TC4 which is less than TC5 so the cheapest way of producing uh, Q2 is to buy F1 pounds of fertilizer and you experience a cost of TC4 instead of TC5 Now let's see what the individual fertilizer levels would have gotten. Okay. For F0, you are just follow along the F0 line. Okay. You're here, which is TC1, here, which is TC3, and here, which is TC5. Let me repeat. TC1, 3, and 5. TC1, three and five. That's F naught. And I'm pick another color. And let's do F one. At F one you're at T C two, T C three, and T C four. Two, three, and four. Two, three, and four. That's the F1 short run total cost. See, they're crossing. And the reason is intuitive. At Q0, you want to go to F0 because you don't want to buy a lot of fertilizer because you're not making a lot of corn. And so at Q0, it's cheaper to buy F0 pounds of fertilizer. But at Q2, which is a lot of corn, it's cheaper to buy F1 pounds of fertilizer because that saves you so much on water. And so it flips at Q2, and at Q1, it's, it doesn't matter. The, t the two lines are crossing. So this shows that it actually is possible for short-run total cost curves to cross and explains intuitively why this is a fairly likely situation to happen.